This is the third lecture for MA1001. This lecture is all about functions. So what is a function? When we have some quantity that depends on another quantity. For example, um, price uh, of, uh, of mailing a, a, a packet. Um, it depends on the weight of the packet. Um, so when you go to the post office, you have to pay more if it's heavier. So it's a function of the weight. Another example is uh, more mathematical. It's the area of a circle. Of a circle um, is a function of its radius. Once you know the radius, you know the area. Um, another one where we don't have a really kind of a formula, but where something happens in the in the world. Um, we could look at the temperature at some particular place, say at Cork Airport. Um, um, so we could look at that uh, on a particular day. Uh, on a particular day. But, of course, it depends on what time it is, all, at time of day. Um, it depends on time of day. So at different times of the day, you have different temperatures. Each of these, then, is an example of a function where this is the function of this input variable, the output as depending on the input. So we can make a, a rough idea, a rough picture of this. We have some sort of input variable, um, and uh, we feed it into the function. And out comes an output variable. The input variable is also often called the dependent variable. And uh, the, sorry, the, in, the independent variable and the output variable is also called the, the dependent variable. Um, so this is the, the terminology. Um, and we think of it as some kind of black box that we could feed an input into and get an output. Considering particular the example of temperature, we don't have a formula that tells us what temperature is going to be all, all day long. They are just a bunch of numbers that come out. But once we know what time of day it is, that determines at one and only one temperature, the temperature at that time of day, even though we don't know how it's determined. We don't have a rule for it. So it doesn't have to be given by a rule, though usually it is. All right, the set of possible, possible inputs, the ones that are allowed for that function, is called the domain of the function. And the set of all possible outputs is called the range of the function. For us, most of our functions are going to be having an input that's a number and an output that's a number, so the domain range will usually be intervals of the real number line. Um, so we can sometimes be given um, a formula for the for the function. Um, we can sometimes be given the function as a as a list and a table, or sometimes we're given it as a graph. So we could have uh, packets that we bring to the to the post office, which have different weights, up to uh, zero grams to one hundred grams, one hundred grams to two hundred grams. Uh, to, sorry, to two. I want to do 250, 250 grams to five hundred grams. We're making a table. Um, five hundred grams to a um, thousand grams or a kilogram, and then um, one kilogram uh, to two kilograms, and then uh, over. Um, once it gets over two kilos, then we're not going to allow it. So if we have these weights, then we can look at constructing a table by asking how much does it cost, and we might have um, some uh, as the output. We have the price, how much you have to pay to get your package uh, delivered, and so if it's in this range, you have to pay maybe let's say three years eighty cents, and uh, in this range four years eighty cents, and in this range. 620 and in this range uh what have i got i've got oh i'm doing the wrong one let's see uh, it should be okay well i've got nine euros in my 
list one to two I don't have a price for according to my list so let's just, just make up one um, let's do uh, I don't know, 15 and then after that it's ineligible you're not allowed to send it because it's too heavy for this system okay so so something like this it's not quite the same as what I have on the notes but uh, but something like this there's the there's the the table we could get, describe a function by a table with input possible input values and an output value for each or a range of output values or a function that describes or some kind of formula that describes how the how how the output values work so uh, we could also describe that sort of thing of course with a with a graph we could look at a graph by um say saying that we have um we had zero to a hundred um there's a hundred and 200, uh, 300, 400, 500, and then somewhere or other we'll have 1,000, and somewhere off there, even further, we'll have 2,000. I don't have room to draw it, but somewhere out there. So um, so we'll have uh, these things skip up by various amounts. So we said that in, in between 0 and 100, the cost was 380. Of course, if, it's, if you don't have it in any ways, it's absolutely 0, but you'd have something like that. And the little circle tells us here, this round uh, without any, with a hole in it, without any solid stuff drawn in it, that we don't actually include the value there, we include the value to there. And that's going to be, our, that was 380. And then we skipped to the next value, which was uh, 480. Well, something like, somewhere like that. Of course, we'll have a little circle there, because it doesn't, because if it's at 100, it's this value. And then, um, so anything larger than that up to so was it up to two fifty I guess just somewhere over here um and then and so on and so forth right this would be um four eighty and so on and so forth so I don't want to draw it all, but that's how you could draw some kind of graph for this kind of thing a picture of 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 the of the function and the domain uh was um zero to two thousand grams up to including um and then the range um was well there were various values that could come out 380 was one of them they're all in euros 380 480 and so on so you could list the various values i don't want to list them all but you get you list out the values that are allowed as the outputs of this kind of this function similarly we could look at um the other example was uh, we had was was the um, area area of a circle. Um, so if we let the radius be r and the area be a, a is uh, the area radius is r, or r is the radius, and so uh, we know the formula that the area is pi r squared, and we can draw a graph of that sort of function uh, looking something like this. Um, some kind of quadratic picture, um, and it goes on forever. And this is the radius, and this is the area. And area is a function of radius. Area is area of radius. A function of radius is pi r squared. And so that's our picture um, in the domain. In this case, because it has to be an area of a circle, and the circle has to have a radius, the radius can't be negative. It's not a circle of its zero radius. So so the domain is zero to infinity. Uh, it has to be a positive radius to be a circle. And then the range is um, is also zero to infinity. It's a positive area. Um, so uh, then we could look at our example of airport data. So this is a much more mathematical example, a pure mathematical example, in that it depends only on mathematical ideas about circles. It doesn't have anything to do with the world. The postage stamps have to do with the world. You have to pay for postage depending on how the uh, the postal people decide to invent the, the rules about what costs what. But when it comes to things like measured temperatures in the world, we don't have any control. Nobody decides how that's going to work. So if we go back to our temperature data, we could look at um, different times of day and the temperature at those times. We'd go out and measure it. And so we'd end up with some kind of table of measured data at 1 o'clock, at 2 o'clock, at 3 o'clock, and so on. Um, and we measure a temperature 2.1, 2.7, 1.5, 1.6. 
1.4 and so on and so forth right I won't write it all down there's more data in your in in the notes um and so what we can do is we can try to measure the temperatures at say starting at I say 0 1 2 3 and so on and then at times times 1 o'clock 2 o'clock and so on so we have time and we have temperature and say capital T for temperature is temp dependent on time and so we start off at 2.1 somewhere about here at the first step and then the next hour we have measured 2.7 a bit higher and then the next step we've measured 1.4 somewhere around here I'm not going to be very accurate or careful now of course we know that there is at any moment in time there is some temperature we just don't, haven't measured what it is these are the three points we've actually measured and so that's a correct picture of this of this table you could if you want to draw them with little bars or something else but let's just keep them as dots but we know there is in fact in the real world an actual temperature it did something I don't know what that's the bit we don't really know what's in the middle between the dots so the correct picture really is just those three dots or some other me method of showing how high the temperature was at those three moments but we know that there is some continuous uh, varying quantity capital T temperature this function of little t time in the middle we just don't know what it is um, so this is a tricky one because of course then in, in some sense the domain depends on whether we're talking about the domain of our measurements the three measurements we've given here at those three different times or are we talking about the actual physical real world temperatures and for the real world temperature the domain is let's say 0 to 24 if we're talking about hours um, of the day uh, that there is a temperature at all those times in that particular day and the range well I don't know what the range is but somewhere um, uh, it depends on what we'd have to go out and actually measure the actual temperatures and see what's the 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 daily low and the daily high uh, temperature and it'd be the interval between those two whatever that is for notation um we'll always be having some kind of input variable let's say and most often most often it's called x but you should be comfortable using any letter uh, greek or latin or maybe even other letters for for input variables and the output variable again is most often uh, most often called y but again you should be comfortable with using any letter and then we have to give the function a name um, name for the function and so we'll usually um, and most often we'll call it f and so we'll write that as y write that, that we have such a function as y is f of x this is of these round brackets are of in other words depending on x once you know the value of x in principle this f if you were somehow given the information of what the f is it would enable you to calculate out y uh, but we could allow other you know other variables that don't have to be x and y we could have uh, p is price and W is weight uh, of packages and so we could have P is P of W or some F of W P is a function of W sometimes we call the function by the same name as the output variable um, we also uh, so have to worry about what why do we put this of parentheses so I said this is this, these round parentheses here are supposed to mean that F is a function uh, depending on the variable X but um, but it is tricky sometimes we allow ourselves to drop that for some functions um, usually ones with longer names than a single uh, single letter we do a drop uh, we sometimes drop those parentheses so for example we'll write sign X means uh, sign of X but otherwise we'll always put in most always we'll put in the parentheses